Hey, 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 what's up? This is Vic from the Online Starting Block. In this video, I'm going to show you something that you need to do after getting your Bluehost hosting account or whatever hosting account you have. If you follow our series, the series shows you exactly how to set up a personal website from scratch where you can own every piece of the puzzle or at least control every piece of the puzzle. And in the last video, we went ahead and got our web hosting service, which was Bluehost. However, there's something to note. So if I was to go back to Bluehost right here, and let's say I log into my account. So the account that we had was called a personal study. That is the name of the domain name we got in this series, if you've been following along from the jump. So it logged me in automatically because I already have an account. So the account's name is a personal study. That is the name of my account. Your account name will be different, but mine is a personal study. Now, why is that important? Let's go back to the screen right here. If you saw the last video, you know about the screen already. All right, let me change the color of this. Change the color um, of this. All right, the web server right here is Bluehost. This is what we use right here. Now, the name of the account was a personal study. That was what I named the account. So that's the name of this account. You gotta follow me here now. So just because the account's name is a personal study, does not mean when a person goes and clicks a personalstudy.com that they will actually go to the server. It does not work that way. Although I named the account, the account name for Bluehost is a personal study. Actually, it's a personalstudy.com. It actually was a domain name. That's what I named it. Just because that's the case, it does not mean if I was to go in and type in a personalstudy.com that it will actually go and get the website files and then retrieve it back to me. That actually doesn't work that way. There's an extra step you have to do. The extra step you have to do, and let me clear this up so I can make this clearer. All right, so let me take that away because that looks pretty, pretty awful. All right, so the extra step that you have to do is you have to connect your domain name or personal study, like your actual domain name from Namecheap. You actually have to connect it with your web server at Bluehost. You have to have your domain name actually connect to this because if you don't do this, when you type in a personal study.com, it's just going to say we can't connect to nothing. Matter of fact, I'll show you right now. So if I was to go ahead and type in a personal study.com, so a personal study, it's kind of hard to say that, a personal study. So if I was to type this in right now, this is what it would say. It probably say something about Namecheap. There we go. It is registered at Namecheap and that's that. We need this to actually point to the Bluehost server and get the files. So we need the domain name to actually connect to the web server files. And the web server that we have, the account name is actually called a personalstudy.com. I actually named it the same thing. That's two different things. So don't be confused if I log in into Bluehost and the account name is this, but that doesn't mean that your domain name will automatically go to your server as well. You gotta do one extra step and this extra step is what's known as connecting. I know you can't see that, but connecting your name servers. I know you cannot see that, but it's called name servers. So your domain name has an option where you can put in a name server and Bluehost actually has a name server assigned to it. So Bluehost has a name server and where your domain name is registered, it has an option to add Bluehost name server. So let me make this make sense. If I want to go back, let's go to your Bluehost account, make sure you're logged in. And all you got to do is on the left side, go to domains, click on domains, and then go to my domains. And then you should see your domain right here. So that is the name of the account, a personal study. That is the name of the account that you have. So what you need to do is click on manage. So right here, you will see name servers, and then you see ns1.bluehost.com and an IP address and then ns2 at bluehost.com and IP address. So that is the identifier of the server that you registered. Don't worry about the IP address, worry about the name servers. So now how do you connect this with your main domain name? All you gotta do is go back to Namecheap where you register your domain name. Let's go to my dashboard and I probably need to log back in, I bet you. Yep, gotta log back in. So hopefully you remember your username and password. Personal study, if you don't, then put that in your, what do you call that? Your notepad. So it's my dashboard. Let's go to the main list on the left side. And you wanna click 
on the manage button that appears right here click on the manage button and now this is the screen i said that we was going to come back here i think two videos ago i said we was going to come back here but now we're back you want to scroll down make sure your domain name is correct so this is actually your domain name that you registered you want to go down and look where it says name servers so you want to go there and you want to click on that and go to custom dns so now it has a space for two name servers so what do you think you're going to put there of course you're going to put ns1.bluehost.com you want to highlight that right click copy go back highlight that right click paste boom and then do the same thing on the bottom this right here highlight that copy and then go back here highlight paste boom or as my mother-in-law says bam <laughs> love you mom <laughs> all right i'm sorry all right um that's it that's it and on the top it says dns server update may take up to 48 hours to take effect that basically means that it will take up to two days so when you type in a personal study.com it will actually access your bluehost server and that's all we did we just literally connected our name servers i just wanted to explain that because that's an important step to do. So basically, if you have like GoDaddy or if your domain name is registered somewhere else and you always wondered how you can put it to a website or a web server, that's exactly how you do it. You connect your name servers. And if you have no idea how the heck to connect name servers, all you have to do is just to reserve a portion of your web server with Bluehost or SiteGround or wherever you use. Find out what the name server is and then go back and connect it. If you can't do that, then just contact customer service and you'll be good. Simple as that. Easy peasy. Contact customer service of your web server company, by the way. And that is why like companies like Bluehost and HostGator, that is why they also have the option where you can register your domain name with it. So you can eliminate this whole name service option because a lot of people don't know about that option. If you're not really into websites like that, that is what it's for. And that's how you do it. I know I kind of explained the underlining of it, but it is very, very important. And that's that. Now, eventually, when you type in a personal study.com, it will go to Bluehost. If it doesn't even do it now, let's see if it does it. There we go. It actually did it. So personal study.com, a new WordPress site coming soon. And if you see at the bottom, a Bluehost powered website. Is this your website? Log into WordPress using Bluehost. So it actually already did it. And it did it in our end, but for it to go to all computers and all devices all over the world where if you type in a personal study, it will probably take about 24 hours. That was the step you need to do. You need to update your name server. So that is how you connect your domain name to a web server so you can get your website going. And that is that. So the next video, we're going to basically set up WordPress and do all the main settings on that so we can get the website going. These steps you gotta do this one time. And finally, I forgot to say, hit the like button and, 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 and that cost for the web server at Bluehost, that's the last cost you have to incur. Everything else for what I know is basically free of charge. Those are the cost of the domain name and also your server. Those are the two main costs that you have to do. That's basically your foundation, your land. Now it's time to build a house. All right, so the video's right here. That's gonna show you how to set up WordPress. So click the video when it's available and check the link in the description box when you see it. And that is that. I'll see you. This is Vic from the Online Starting Block. I'm out.